A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. <clears throat> this man, God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, 
Think of what is above, not what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they've taken the Lord from the tomb and we do not know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran. But the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but he did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple went in the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. be seated. Brothers and sisters, this is a uniquely a Christian celebration. Easter is uniquely Christian. Only Christians celebrate this. Everybody else celebrates the other feasts that Christians have. But with Easter, it's only Christians. You know, many people celebrate Christmas, you know. Uh, many people who are not Christians also celebrate Christmas. Or at least they enjoy the holidays that have to do with Christmas. They enjoy all the holidays. They take off from work and everything. They get all their vacation. They get even... People even get more money yeah, on their yes, little, little bonus, you know, uh, in their workplaces for Christmas. You got every, every child, whether Christian or not, they're expecting some gift. Santa Claus is coming, you know. So Christmas is celebrated by everybody. Christians don't have to do anything about that to get the birth of Jesus celebrated. But we Easter... Only Christians celebrate that. But it happens to be the most important celebration of Christians. It happens to be the heart of the Christian message. It happens to be the heart of the Christian story. The Christian story is not a death story. It doesn't end with death. The Christian story ends with life, resurrection, hope. The Christian story is a joyous story. It's a joyful story. It's a hopeful story. It has to do with the resurrection. And that is why only Christians have to prove or defend what we celebrate in Easter. Only Christians have to prove that. Buddhists are not asked to prove anything, anything about the resurrection they don't have to prove all that. Nobody goes to the Muslim to ask them, oh, you got to prove to me that Jesus rose from the dead. No. They don't have to. Only Christians have to give an account for why they believe that Jesus rose from the dead. What is your proof? 
What is your reason? And a lot of reasons have been thrown out there. I am going to sing a song today. Um, lucky you. <laughs> In that song, there is a line that says, an empty grave is there to prove. I say, is there to, to show because it doesn't prove it totally. It begins the proof that you have something to see, at least. That some people, some witnesses saw that. But they didn't see Jesus actually coming out of the grave. They just saw an empty tomb. So, just like in the ancient days, a lot of people who came to criticize that and criticize Christians, they're like, you guys are naive. You just saw an empty tomb. You didn't see the man coming out. Somebody came to steal the body. So it doesn't prove it totally. You cannot win. You cannot bring people to sign on to the Christian company just using the empty tomb. You cannot, get, you cannot convince people to come and join you, to come and join us in praising, in saying hallelujah, in praising God, we cannot get people to join us with the empty tomb, with a picture of it or whatever. In your bulletins, I have a picture of myself celebrating Mass in the, in the tomb of Jesus Christ in Jerusalem. When I went, uh, I got the opportunity to go with a pilgrim, uh, pil lead a pilgrimage over there. And we celebrated Mass there. And in, an, in the tomb, I celebrated Mass on Jesus' tomb. And I told the people, we are only here to put a face to what we already believe. This should not make you believe more. If you don't believe, this will not convince you because Jesus is not here. He's not there. He's not in the tomb. Jesus is in America waiting for you. Jesus is everywhere. That's why he did not remain in the tomb. Jesus is everywhere. He's in America. You don't have to pay all this money in order to come to believe. No. Jesus is in America. He's in your home. He's in your heart. He's in your workplace waiting for you to discover him. So the empty tomb begins... It can spark your research and your search for a ground, a reason why you do what you do. But it doesn't prove it totally. It begins it. You know what proves, what is going to prove that Jesus Christ rose from the dead? You know what proves that we are Easter people? It is to live. The, God, the first reading says, we are witnesses to these things. We are witnesses. We are the ones who are going to tell other people that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And how are we going to do that? We can't use the empty tomb. So how are we going to do that? It is by our lives. By the kind of life that we live by the kind of marriages that we live, by the kind of way that we raise children, by the kind of ways that we choose leaders in our world, in our political world, wherever we find ourselves, by the kind of lifestyle, by the kind of choices we make in the world, by the kind of lifestyle you live, whether it is a joyful life, whether it's a moody life or it's a, a deadly life, by the kind of Patience that we have. Jesus' own life. That we begin to live that. That is the testimony that Jesus is risen from the dead. He's alive. Because if he's not alive, I, I, why should I sign off to something that is dead? Why should I join a company that is heading to death? That whose, whose story ends in death? No, I join a company that that has hope of living. So when you are living that, it means that somebody comes to look at you and say, ah, why are you doing this in a way in the first place? 
And you tell the person because somebody called Jesus rose from the dead and he's alive. That's why I'm leaving this. I'm leaving it to let you know that he is alive. We, our lives, keep telling people Jesus is risen from the dead. And we're going to shout about it. We're going to sing about it. We're going to pray about it every time we gather so that when we go out, the way we live our lives with everybody, everybody, the way you talk, I don't even want to go there. Kind of language we use against each other. If Jesus will not do that, you should not do that. And, and, and bending with the Christian community, going to church, going to church, If you, this is your first time in a long time, welcome. But we want, we pray that this will energize you to begin to research. You don't have to agree with the church 100% before you go to church. There are a lot of us Christians come together to inspire one another when we go to church. We don't want to be uh, uh, what we call a... Uh, 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 you go to church three times in the year or in your lifetime. There are some people who go to church three, three times in their lifetime. The first time is when they are, when they are hatched. Okay? When you are hatched, when you are born, we come for baptism. Okay? So that's the first time we see them in church. Then the next time we see them in church is when they are matched. That's when you see a wedding, you know, everybody, when they are matched with somebody. And the last time we see them in church is when they are dispatched. <laughs> when we see them in a coffin, right? We send them up for three times in their life, they go to church. Okay. We don't want that. Uh, you don't want that either. That will not... That will not convince anybody to join us. And we'd like to tell, say something about the CEOs also. Uh, we want to talk about, they talk about CEOs. Christmas, Easter only. Uh, <laughs> that will not convince anybody to go to church. Yeah. You, want to, you want to be in the company that inspires hope all the time because Jesus lives. Jesus lives and is active. You want to show that. And you come in order to be inspired so that you can go out and be Jesus to other people because he lives. So if we believe that Jesus has risen from the dead, which we do, and we are here because we do believe, let us, let us make it real. Let us not be one time in a long time all the time. Let us go always. Let us open our hearts and go always and try to find out every day, every time we gather, let us find, let us learn something new about Jesus. And then when we know about him, we will be able to represent him adequately. We'll be able to show him well in the world. We will be witnesses of his resurrection in our lives, in every department of your life, whether you're married or single or whatever, student, whoever you are, you can be Jesus. You can be Jesus. You can tell people about Jesus with that life because Jesus lives. He is alive. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. God sent his son, they call him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to buy my pardon. Empty grave is 
there to prove my Savior lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because sent his son they call him Jesus he came to love heal and forgive he lived and died to buy my My Savior lives because He lives. I can face tomorrow because Jesus lives. All fear is gone. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. That is our passion. That is what we stand on. That is the reason for Christianity. Otherwise, there's no Christianity if Jesus remained in the grave. But because he rose from the dead, we believe he's alive, and that convinces us that we should live the life of Jesus in the world and make our world a better place, a heaven. Jesus is risen indeed. Alleluia, 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 alleluia.